I've been in the industry for some time now. Um, first as a player, I played soccer for KCB. I was in the team that uh, brought KCB into the Premier League. Uh, that is uh, in 97. I'm proud that uh, I helped KCB uh, attain the top level football status. Then after that, uh, I stopped playing um, uh, quite early, at around 25, 26, I was done with uh, playing because basically I was still going through school and uh, uh, getting the two together w was not really easy. It was a challenge for, uh, to me. So after, uh, after playing, I, I I moved into the media. I joined the media through a very funny, uh, I call it a coincidence. It was a match at uh, Nyayo Stadium. Uh, Madara United was playing Gormaya. So I attended that match. And uh, incidentally, Karo Radul uh, also attended the match with some uh, some fans and there was an issue uh, that I brought that match into a halt then my argument there was quite vocal I was quite vocal in the argument uh, to what stopped the match and Carol Radul was uh, seated close to me and she told me uh, well can I have your number uh, so that we can discuss it this on her show uh, Caro had a, had a show uh, on Classic 105 then, and Kiss 100. So I said, why not? Uh, we exchanged numbers, and uh, during her show, she called me uh, live on, on radio, and uh, I, I explained myself. The reason why I thought the referee's decision was wrong, and uh, she, she liked what I, how I explained and how uh, it all went. A week later, she called me and told me that uh, Radio Africa was starting a new station. She was going to head a new station called Radio Jumbo. And uh, if I would uh, like to join the team and uh, become uh, an analyst. Well, uh, I took the challenge and the rest is history. That's about uh, 13 years ago when I joined radio. And incidentally, apparently though, uh, my interview was done in English. Um, radio Jumbo, the first week, Radio Jumbo was, a, was an English station. Many people might not remember, but it was an English station. So I joined and we did our first show in English. Then it turned to Swahili. So. The Swahili that we do on radio is something that we've done for time and time again now, for about 13 years. I'm so proud, I'm so happy that uh, it has turned to be what it has turned to be. Uh, I call it success because I put a lot of uh, hours on, 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 on my content. Uh, what we talk about on radio is not just something you wake up and uh, talk about. No, it's, it's you prepare. It's a lot of preparation. Uh, for me, preparation for radio is uh, uh, something that I do uh, 24 hours a day. As I walk, as I play, as I relax, I prepare for my show in the sense that I love football. I follow football. So basically it's something that uh, uh, I do 24 hours so that when I go into radio, the content is there. Sports in Kenya generally has not really taken the shape. Um, I'd like to challenge the government because as a stakeholder, the government needs to invest more into sports, into the infra infrastructure. Because when you invest into the infrastructure, you'll produce good players, you'll get good results, and ultimately, the sports ecosystem will, uh, will flourish. At the moment, we have, for example, very few stadiums. Uh, for me, I think it, it's choking the industry. Uh, we are not producing our full potential in athletics. For example, look at uh, 
Kipchoge Keino. This is a region that uh, is known of uh, producing very good athletes. And look at the stadiums that are here. If somebody would like to train, where do you go for training? So, first of all, the government has really let us down as far as the infrastructures are concerned. Uh, going to the players, I think, again, the potential has not really been um, ha harvested as far as investors into the game because we need investors into this game. We need people to pump in finances so that uh, there's good payment, good remuneration for the players, good remuneration for the coaches and uh, everybody in the, in the industry. So I still believe that more can be done uh, to make sure that, uh, first of all, we, uh, we improve our infrastructure and two, uh, remuneration for the, uh, for the players. Well, I don't think um, the current earnings in this country can sustain someone, not even in their retirement, but even when they are still playing. It's still way too low uh, compared to uh, the economy, the, 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 the current economy, the status of the economy of this country. So that one needs also to be worked on. Uh, and for, for, for retirees, I think the system is, is still clogged. The system is not flowing well. So ultimately, the, the product that comes from this industry is a product that is not well done. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that even guys who retire, they still cannot really get to have a comfortable life because uh, while they are still in their prime, they're not really getting to their full potential. So they're not getting the income the, the way it should be. So it translates to when they, they, they retire. So it's an industry that needs a lot of um, looking into so that it can be revamped. Well, I think football is heading uh, the wrong direction. When Nick Mwendwa, the current um, regime came in, there was a lot of goodwill, there was a lot of, uh, the, the regime was quite vibrant and we saw some development. And that was even translated in our clubs, the performance of our clubs. Somehow went up, the national team we went for AFCON. But I think the, the regime took a wrong turn and things just slid back to where we were. Uh, I think what needs to happen now first is we need to talk to each, to each other, not at each other. The government, the federation, uh, the government FIFA, uh, F, uh, the federation uh, FIFA, the relationship is not really uh, conducive at the moment. Uh, I think uh, FIFA uh, or federation through FIFA should uh, come down from the high horse. The government should come down from the high horse. Let's not have hard stands. First of all, when we go into a negotiation, the first condition is there is no condition. Nobody should have hard stands. Nobody should come into negotiations with a condition.